Hello, and welcome to Comic Book Herald's Guide on where to start with Marvel Comics today in the Marvel Fresh Start era, which started in 2018, has continued on through 2019 to present. I'm your host, Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of ComicBookHerald.com. Now, one of the main focuses of Comic Book Herald, if you're unfamiliar or new to the site and the content here, is I attempt to explain and explore entry points, on-ramps, and Marvel continuity at large for new readers. The biggest project I have over at CBH is the complete Marvel reading order with a main focus um, for a lot of cases on modern entry points for new readers. So what I'm going to talk about today is if you're wondering how do I start with Marvel, where do I start, what are good comics to pick up and jump in so I can understand what's going on in the contemporary Marvel landscape. Maybe you want to understand what's going on with X-Men, with the big House of X and Powers of X. We're going to talk about that. Maybe you've heard about what's going on in the pages of Avengers or Thor or Guardians of the Galaxy, right? All these cool Marvel properties. It's always hard to find a way in. I'm going to give you 15 and I just held up 10 fingers to indicate 15. That's how serious I am about this. I'm going to give you 15 on-ramps for the Marvel Fresh Start era. Now, as I make clear in the post that accompanies this, and let's flip those over on comicbookherald.com. I'll include a link in the show notes. This is the Marvel Fresh Start Fast Track Guide, okay? So this is specifically 15 entry points for the Marvel's Fresh Start era, where to start with present-day Marvel comics. There are, of course, a lot of other guides on CBH. I have fast tracks for basically every era of the publisher's history, starting, of course, with Fantastic Four number one back in 1961. So there's a lot of other ways you can jump into Marvel Comics, but for those of you looking to get into the ones being released currently, this is, I think, the best approach. And again, I'll also include a link for the full Marvel Fresh Store reading order. I've got one for the entirety of the Marvel Universe. If you're like, I have to read absolutely everything, a lot of readers are like that. I totally get it. Obviously, is the one putting together the reading order over on CBH. It's something I'm doing as well. So that's an opportunity too. But a lot of people, for most people, if you're looking to just dive in and figure out what do I like, what should I read, how do I even do this, what, you know, just this comic book experience of the Marvel Universe, the Fast Track Guide is probably the good, the the right place for you. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Again, you can explore this over on Comic Book Herald when I'm done talking here, but I'm going to talk through the 15 picks that I did today. Now, I should call out, these are not my 15 favorite necessarily. These are not in order of preference so much as these are 15 essential reads. Now, sometimes that means I love them and they're, you know, they're included on the list because I think they're excellent and are going to help you understand what's going on at Marvel and enjoy the Marvel Universe more. In most cases, there's an overlap of I like them and also they contain a lot of crucial information about what is going on in Marvel Comics, okay? So without further ado, because we got 15 to go through, let's get into where to start with Marvel Comics in the Marvel Fresh Start era. And before I do so, if you like the content, if you like what's going on on comicbookherald.com, please consider liking and subscribing on the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel. Please uh, consider subscribing to the podcast, which is Best Comics Ever, or My Marvelous Year for our Marvel Reading Club that we do, where we go year by year through the history of Marvel. That's going to be a great place to start for Marvel, for people who are like, I have to go to the very beginning in 1961, which I know a lot of you do. I get questions and, and comments like that all the time on Comic Book Herald in the time I've been doing it. But for the rest of us, we can jump in on the Marvel Fresh Start era. So the very first comic to talk about in the Fresh Start era is Avengers, written by Jason Aaron with art by Ed McGinnis primarily. The Avengers have a new takeover, a new creative takeover in May 2018, which is when Fresh Start kicked off and have since that time been going through a whole host of changes. I'm going to scroll on the YouTube through some panels that indicate what's been going on in Avengers, but the big takeaway from the Aaron and McGinnis run so far, which is about 20 issues deep, is that there's kind of a return to the core Avengers unit. It's the, you know, sort of the legacy Captain America, Thor, and Iron Man, you know, the ones that people would be most familiar with in the pages of um, or from the MCU, of course, with Captain Marvel, Black Panther, and actually Ghost Rider Robbie Reyes mixed in. And so far, this Avengers unit, they have dealt with the likes of Celestials in their first arc, which is Celestials are these big godlike beings that connect to the Eternals, 
which are coming to the MCU later, I am certain we have not seen the end of the Celestials role in Avengers, but we've also seen Jason Aaron sort of taking the Avengers on a trip around the globe. We've got the development of Agents of Wakanda. We've got the likes of um, a vampire war where we have, you know, like I showed for a second there, Captain America taking on a whole bunch of, of vampires, holding up a cross with his shield, which is really, really pretty awesome. So Jason Aaron's having a lot of fun with this. He's also playing with this concept called the BC Avengers. This is a unit that is uh, led by Odin, actually, in you know BC prehistoric times. And he, Jason Aaron is kind of, he's been slowly playing with this idea of the Avengers being a roster that has existed in the Marvel Universe uh, for a, a long, long time. So... That is definitely a good entry point, I think, for Avengers fan. It's not my favorite series, I think, at Marvel right now. You know, it is relatively, I think, inconsistent, uh, but it's playing with some big fun ideas. The stuff that's going on right now, they're doing a lot of stuff with Ghost Rider in Hell. They're about to be doing some crazy stuff with the history of the Star Brand in the Marvel Universe. So this is kind of the core what's going on with Avengers titles. And one thing I will say here is you're going to want to stop right before issue number 18 and jump ahead to War of the Realms because then Avengers is going to tie in to an event. Don't worry, we're going to talk about War of the Realms as well. The second book that everyone should read, and this one is firmly on the I love it uh, you know, sliding time scale, is Immortal Hulk by Al Ewing with art primarily by Joe Bennett. Immortal Hulk has revamped the Hulk as sort of a horror book of sorts, but it's also playing with these wild cosmic elements. It's also just playing with the form and and the history and continuity of the Hulk. It is absolutely excellent. It is an all-timer, an instant classic, and uh, John and I over on Comic Book Herald, we did a whole deep dive on the Immortal Hulk. We love it that much. This one's going to go down as one of the best Marvel comics of all time. I think there's really just no question about it. And here you can see we're doing some crazy body horror stuff in this book. It is a blast. Immortal Hulk, an easy one to pick up and dive into. Highly, highly recommended for anybody looking where to start this one. Again, even if you think like, "Ah, I don't know if I'm that into the Hulk. This is the book that is making people who didn't really care about the Hulk love a Hulk comic. It's that good. From there... I would move to Jason Aaron's Hall of Hammers. I am the only one calling it this as far as I know, but basically this is a catch-all for his run on Thor, which started actually in 2012. So this is the first instance where we're not starting with a quote-unquote number one issue in a run um, because it's this run actually dates all the way back to 2012. Now this is a problem you're going to run into with Marvel Comics if you are looking on, you know, where do I start with Marvel? A lot of times you'll see, well, you can start with this 2014 series, but actually it's referencing these things that happened in 2008, and those are referencing things that happened in 1977, right? And it's just sort of this endless cycle of going, going, going back until you're sitting at Fantastic Four number one in 1961 and you've got, you know, like an impossible reading list ahead of you. With Aaron's Thor, for the Marvel Fresh Start era, personally, I think it's worth going back to 2012 Thor God of Thunder to enjoy this whole run. It's that good. I think Aaron's run on Thor, it's probably the second greatest Thor run, in my opinion, of all time. I would put it just below Walt Simonson's Thor run in the 80s, which is easily the greatest of all time. It's very, very good. So it's worth going back. Do you absolutely have to? Uh, It's going to help a lot. I mean, definitely with this one, it's going to help. But if you don't, you're going to want to check out Thor number one, which starts in 2018. It's written by Jason Aaron with art by Mike Del Mundo. And it is going to give some exposition on all the things that have happened. That's going to lead to the War of the Realms event, which was Marvel's 2018 event. Um, Actually, 2019. Wow, it's been a long year. Uh, Yeah, that one's come out this year. It's a very fun event. It's my favorite Marvel event since 2015 Secret Wars. I've got a whole reading order that you can find on Comic Book Herald for every tie-in because, of course, there's the main event issues, but then, like, the entire Marvel Universe crosses over into it. So definitely this is the the, the part of the Where to Start guide that gets a little messier, as comics tend to do, right? There's a lot more crossing over and things that run back years, right? So I'm trying to 
offer it up as a good place to jump in, but also with full knowledge that if you're very new to comics, this one might be a bit more confusing to you, okay? There's there's more rabbit holes you can dive down. And that can be very fun, but I would say if you find that intimidating, skip ahead to some of the simpler ones on the list. All right, and then Aaron's Run does continue into Valkyrie, which is co-written uh, with Al Ewing, which is an extension of his Thor run, as well as King Thor, which is reportedly going to be the conclusion to Aaron's run on Thor, which again dates back about seven years now. From there, and we've got a whole lot of Jason Aaron stuff up front here, he is the writer who is really one of the foremost Marvel architects in um, at Marvel Comics right now. He is, again, because of his Thor work in 2012, he was sort of tasked with becoming uh, one of the leaders you know, of the Avengers, and that's been pretty cool. He's done a really nice job with it. Again, Thor has been very, very good. He's also, and I just, like, if you're not excited for War of the Realms, here's Black Panther riding a giant panther into battle with all sorts of Avengers. It's War of the Realms is very, very fun. It brings, like, um, like DNC, D&D type, you know, sort of like fantasy into the, the you know, earthbound realm of, of um, Avengers comics. But the other thing Aaron's writing is Conan the Barbarian. And this is a big push by Marvel to bring Conan back. Now, Marvel Comics had Conan in the 1970s. There was a, a run that started with Roy Thomas and uh, Barry Windsor Smith. I believe Sal Buscema then was on the book for a long time. They did like 275 issues of Conan the Barbarian, plus spinoffs. You know, there's Savage Sword of Conan and all sorts of other things. But basically, Marvel had a really long, successful run with this in the 70s and 80s. And then they, they have not published anything since. I think actually... I think they lost the license and recently got it back, which is maybe a part of this. Maybe they've been sitting on it for a while. I don't know. I don't follow the inside baseball of it too much because I've never been a big Conan fan. And I definitely have that sort of feeling with this series, but Marvel's pushing it hard. And that's why it's on this list. It's not because I'm saying, actually, these are awesome. I think they're interesting. I think, again, like Jason Aaron is an extremely talented writer. Mama Dasar is doing a lot of the art on the first story arc. Isa Ribich is doing the covers. Like, it's a good looking comic. I don't know that I'm ever going to be the biggest Conan the Barbarian fan. Nonetheless, not only is Marvel making a push to make this comic relevant again, they're also bringing Conan into the Marvel Universe proper. Here on the YouTube channel, I've got a shot of Conan fighting Wolverine. And Wolverine sort of bringing the attitude of, I think, you know, fans like myself, Marvel fans, you know, first and foremost, who are like, get this Conan guy out of here, and sort of lashing out. But of course, over time, we're going to see Conan incorporated. Now, the way that Conan gets integra integrated, he basically, he's left behind in the Savage Land by the Avengers in a story arc, and then that sets him up to be a player on the Savage Avengers, which is an ongoing title right now by Jerry Dugan and Mike Diodato Jr. So, Conan's here. He's here to stay. Marvel's planning events. They're planning like a Serpent Wars event with him in December 2019, which is going to cross over with some Conan and Moon Knight, um, you know, stories. He's also going to be in the 2099 crossover, which is coming in in 2019 as well. So the Conan verse, you got to check it out. It's an essential read. It's also like if you like that type of story, that sort of, you know, high fantasy um, and, you know, savage barbarian type like landscape. Conan might be a great fit for you and it's easy to jump in because there's actually less baggage um, there's a lot of Conan baggage like you know story arcs in the past like I think he started I think he was created by Robert E. Howard in like 1932 I want to say um, but nonetheless as far as comics go you know Marvel really did kick that off in earnest in 2018 so that's that's really where this this era of Conan begins from there I would move to the Tiny Heesey Coates verse uh, Tony Heese Coates, one of my favorite authors, writing comics, um, also just one of my favorite authors, but he's writing. he's been writing Black Panther since 2016. I really love the book. Uh, he's done a great job on it. He's branched out with the Fresh Start era into Captain America and Black Panther. So I would say both of these titles are must-reads for fans of the characters, especially Black Panther. You've got him traveling to space in this era in a, a sort of mystery. Captain America, you've got taking on uh, a few things. Now, in Cap's case, it, it's it's definitely like a political espionage thriller. It's very, very well done. You got a lot of art by Lionel Francis Yu, which is always a plus. Captain America is dealing with the fallout of the 2017 Secret Empire event. And you could go back and read it if you want. Again, I got a full reading order guide on comicbookherald.com. But what I would tell you is Captain America, there was a false 
Captain America using his face, using his name to take over the world as part of Hydra, right? And obviously this was this was pretty controversial at the time, um, but in the event landscape, in the Marvel Universe landscape, there's now sort of a, a world where Steve Rogers' face and persona was used in the name of, of absolute tyranny. And Steve Rogers has to sort of come back from that. So Coates and company have been doing a really nice job actually trying to play with, like, what does that mean and what does that look like and how does Steve Rogers move forward in the Marvel Universe today? And then, of course, like I mentioned in Black Panther, we've got uh, Coates with artist Daniel Acuna, who I always love doing uh, Panther in space and doing this sort of T'Challa's in space. We don't totally know why. We don't totally know how he got there, but it's this really interesting intergalactic empire of Wakanda type story. So those are great as well. Now, Venom, Absolute Carnage are number six on the list. I've talked a lot about Absolute Carnage, and I, I did a road to guide here on the channel. I've been loving it. We're three issues in at the time of recording, and Venom has been very good since Fresh Start launch. Absolute Carnage has has lived up to the promise that Venom uh, sort of instilled way back when it launched with Venom number one in May 2019. Now, if you're thinking, I think a little bit like Hulk, like I'm. I don't really care about Venom. Like I don't. Symbiotes are are kind of you know old hat to me. These are books that make that have made me definitely, and I, and I like Venom. I would say you know there are Venom runs that I like quite a bit, but they I would not have thought you know Venom would be number, one of my favorite comics. And this is the type of story that makes Venom one of your favorite comics. It's that good. They're playing a ton with this sort of cosmic mythology that Cates and an artist Ryan Stegman are developing. The God of the Symbiotes. His name is Null. He's this major player here, and, and honestly, like he's become a major player across the Marvel Universe landscape, not just in Venom in Absolute Carnage. So Venom, you can read like the entire series is sort of a road to Absolute Carnage, and again, I would follow the links I include on comicbookherald.com because that's going to give you the exact buildup and order in which you should read these things prior to Absolute Carnage, which of course also as a Marvel event includes a bunch of tie-ins as well, but it's off to a really good start so far. So those are essentials. All right. Number eight on the list, or if I can count, number seven, Amazing Spider-Man by Nick Spencer and Ryan Otley, alongside Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man by Tom Taylor and Juan Cabal. Spidey is not my favorite book, I think. Uh, he is my favorite superhero of all time. The, really, these books are just solid. I think these are good, strong, solid Spider-Man stories. They are essential because Spider-Man is, of course, you know, right up there with the X-Men as far as the biggest players and the most popular players in the Marvel Universe. I really like Ryan Otley, his art here. He's got a Carnage versus Spider-Man battle. This is actually from the recent Absolute Carnage uh, tie-in, Amazing Spider-Man number 30. But Otley is, is a fantastic artist. I love his style. I do have some challenges with this. If you're familiar with Ryan Otley's work uh, with Robert Kirkman on Invincible, it's really hard <laughs> to break away and and see him drawing like Peter Parker and Mary Jane and not just think of the main uh, Invincible characters because the style is very much the same. But if you're unfamiliar, it's probably very easy. It probably doesn't matter to you. Nonetheless, I quite like his style. Nick Spencer is, is a pretty good fit, honestly. He has the humor and the sense of pace for Spider-Man story. The series I like a little bit more is Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. This is in large part because Tom Taylor is one of my favorite comic book writers. Uh, he's very, very funny. He's very, very smart. Uh, but he's working with Juan Cabal here. And as you can see on the YouTube channel here from the Sinister 60 portrait that Juan Cabal put together in one of my favorite issues of the year, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man number six, Juan Cabal is excellent. I'm loving his art. He's actually going to be working. He's just announced, um, I think, uh, yesterday at New York Comic Con that he'll be working with Al Ewing on Guardians of the Galaxy in 2020. That's going to be a must-add <laughs> pull list. I think I have super high hopes for that book once we get there. Um, of course, on being unreleased, it is not yet on this list. So, the Spideyverse, always an essential, but it's in pretty good hands right now. The next one on the list I have is You Are Deadpool. This is probably the most out there pull for me because it is, it's definitely the least essential. This is a five-issue series that was written by Al Ewing with art by R.B. Silva, and it's a choose-your-own-adventure Deadpool comic. I include it because it's so much fun. It's the most fun I had with any comic book in like 2018 it's just a blast you actually need like some dice and pen and paper to sort of write down and keep track on what you're doing i mean it's as much a game as it is a comic 
I have to include it just for the experience. Uh, it's also like, it's my favorite Deadpool book because of that. It's so much fun. Deadpool's a perfect fit for it. If you're interested in playing with a Deadpool story, I would recommend start with You Are Deadpool. It's so much fun. From there, the Fantastic Four relaunched with Marvel Fresh Start. And this has been taken over by Dan Slott, initially with art by Sarah Pichelli. We've had a lot of art by uh, the likes of Aaron Cooter since then. And I, I'm not super into the Fantastic Four relaunch. Like, I don't think it's been amazing. Um, nonetheless, the Fantastic Four were, they didn't have a comic since 2015. You know, they've been out of the Marvel Universe for the first time ever. And honestly, that's just weird. They belong in the Marvel Universe. So it's wonderful to have them back. I'm looking forward to the book, like the arc that really sells me on having them back. I think Slot is very, like, like I was saying with Spider-Man, he's very solid on the arc. He know It's not like he doesn't know the team. He did a really good The Things miniseries, actually, that went for like eight issues in the mid-2000s. So he's got the capabilities and some stuff, like there's a big wedding special. Um, actually, there's a big wedding of Ben Grimm and Alicia Masters. And it's like, it touches on all the stuff you kind of want to see from Fantastic Four, I just, you know, so far, it has not blown me away by any measure. A comic that has blown me away, number 10 on the list, Runaways by Rainbow Rowell and Chris Anka. Runaways, I've, every time I talk about it, it's just, it's one of the best comics. It's almost easy to take for granted because it's been so good for so long. It, it's also easy to take for granted that, like, Rowell and Anka were able to make Runaways this good again. Uh, the series was created in 2001 by Brian K. Vaughn and Adrian Alfona, and honestly, like, it peaked, you know, 2001 to 2004, and it's just never reached those heights again. So the fact that Rommel and Anka were able to do this in 2018 pretty effortlessly, or at least they make it look effortless, uh, is amazing. It's like, this book, it's definitely the best, I would say, YA title on the list. Good comedy throughout, good beats. It's the best Runaways book on my list, I think unquestionably or the best runaways book of course it is it's one of the best books on the list it's the best runaways book since the original run all right number 11 on the list we're heading into the end game now infinity wars tying and then into the wolverine and the infinity watch uh this one is it's a big event it's a 2018 event that marvel did again this one would not be on here if it was like a best of list i think it's fine it's not my favorite thing it's clearly trying to benefit from the uh, Avengers Infinity War movie that came out the same year, which is fine. I, I Marvel should have more synergy with the MCU in terms of like, I don't know, inspiration or connective tissue, not necessarily in terms of like sharing the same beats or, or, you know, MCU crossing over into Marvel Comics, which obviously is a totally different subject. But it's a big event. A lot of stuff happens in this and a lot of stuff that matters. Uh, it actually sets up and also it sets up like Wolverine's really weird cosmic role. He's joining here with the Infinity Watch, which is typically a role Adam Warlock takes in the Marvel Universe. So, honestly, this explains, like, a whole corner and kind of big event in the Marvel landscape. It's well worth checking out for that. And, actually, it sets up the better piece of this, which is the Donny Cates Cosmic Universe. Now, I did a whole Donny Cates reading order, which, again, you can check over on CBH. I did a I did a guide to it in the um, on the YouTube channel and podcast. But, in short... Donny Cates has done across like Thanos, Cosmic Ghost Rider, Death of the Inhumans. He's done a whole bunch of, and Guardians of the Galaxy now, he's going to write about, I think, like 10 to 11 issues of this. He's done a lot of really interesting cosmic stuff, including Silver Surfer Black, which is one of my favorite comics of the year. He's got art there by Trad Moore. Um, it's an excellent, excellent looking book. I would highly recommend you check out the CBH Donny Cates Universe ride to like figure out the order of these things and, and where these series go in sequence. But this is the best Marvel cosmic stuff going on right now Kate's is definitely one of the best writers at Marvel making Kate's cosmic verse an easy pick for number 12 on the where to start guide all right we've got three more including number 13 the Chip Zdarsky verse Chip Zdarsky extremely funny guy long known as a, a sort of comedy artist he does art on sex criminals with Matt Fraction which is one of the funniest and best books from the sort of image boom of the the early 2000s and now he's writing a whole bunch of Marvel books. And guess what? He's great at it. Uh, two books in particular that I love from recently reading in 2019, Invaders and Daredevil. I think his Daredevil is probably the best starting point for a lot of new readers. It is easy to access. It's coming in and playing off a lot of the big developments that have happened in the Marvel Universe. Like, for example, Mayor Fisk is mayor, or Mayor Fisk, Wilson Fisk, is mayor of New York City. So we've got this kind of wild moment in, in political, like, 
you know upheaval that the kingpin has has thrown into the the works but um Zarowski's doing a great job on dd invaders is shockingly good as well uh, i've never been a huge invaders fan you know those world war ii stories tend to i don't know kind of become very samey for me but what he's doing with invaders is he's made it really like a namor the submariner story where it's looking at the secret history of Namor and Professor X. And I actually talked about this a bunch in conjunction with House of X and Powers of X, because in Powers of Tanks, it seems like it's going to play into the Hickmanverse as well. But, you know, we've got the secret history of Namor the Submariner, and it's really looking at, it's like playing off things that happened in Avengers where, you know, he was, he's become a killer. So Captain America, Bucky Barnes, Jim Hammond, the original Human Torch, the Invaders, they are looking into what is going on with the King of Atlantis that has turned him into a straight-up supervillain in the Marvel U. Two more to go. Marvel Comics number 1000 is number 14 on my list for two reasons. I think it's a marketing atrocity. I think it's kind of gross <laughs> that this comic even exists because there's no reason Marvel should have published a 1,000th issue of Marvel Comics. That is not a thing that exists. They are doing it entirely because DC had Action Comics number 1,000 and Detective Comics number 1,000, which actually built up since 1939 to 1,000 issues. Marvel's just very cynically trying to get money, uh, which is not shocking. I guess that's what a publisher should do, but it's just kind of oddly cynical for their 80th anniversary. Nonetheless, there are two essential components to this for Marvel Universe fans. One, there's one page of a really good Jonathan Hickman and Dustin Weaver apocalypse setup that is going to play a role in the pages of the next item on this list, House of X and Powers of 10. That's a pretty minor number one. Number two, L. Ewing is writing throughout this a, a lot of connective tissue leading to what seems to be an event or a major storyline that he'll be writing in uh, 2020. Now, this setting up this thing called the Eternity Mask, which is uh, an artifact that allows the user to sort of, well, we don't totally know, honestly, what the Eternity Mask is going to be, but we know it's going to play a role in 2020. So this one's an odd pick. It's an odd duck because it's a single issue, but that's why I include Marvel 1000 at number 14 on the where to start with Marvel in current day. Number 15, my absolute favorite of the year so far, the one everyone should be checking out House of X and Powers of 10. Let's just let Magneto speak for us here. You have new gods now. They are mutants. They are the X-Men. Mutant kind has changed. The Marvel Universe has changed. X-Men comics are forever changed. Myra McTaggart, big time changed. <laughs> and the X-Men are in amazing, amazing hands. Now again, because this is Where to Start Guide, if you're unfamiliar with the works of Jonathan Hickman, I've done a lot of, of sort of prep work here on CBH and throughout the various properties, setting up like what are the comics you should read before Hickman's X-Men? Um, you know, what? Uh, how can you read the Jonathan Hickman Marvel Universe that comes prior to this? Because he does a whole suite of comics from 2008 to 2016. You can find all these links on comicbookherald.com. Honestly, though, House of X Powers of 10 it's a reasonably good starting point for new fans. Like they make every effort to explain a lot of things. And then of course, for the details that you don't understand, you can come on back to comicbookherald.com. You can check out the Crack and Krakoa series on YouTube, and I will explain as much as humanly possible as I as I, you know, kind of go on this journey through the Marvel universe for myself. So there you have it. 15. And again, I did the 10 finger. I I, I don't know. How do you, how do you gesture 15 dramatically? 15. Get foot up here next time. Great starting points in the Marvel Universe for Marvel Fresh Start in 2018, 2019. Hopefully this gives you a great sense of where to dive into Marvel Comics today. If you have questions, as always, you can find me really anywhere at Comic Book Herald uh, on social. You can go to comicbookherald.com. I've got tons and tons of guides. If you have a question about where do I start and you know what's the reading order of certain things, I almost certainly have the guide on comicbookherald.com. Reach out. Write to me at davidcomicbookherald.com, right? I will I will try to get back to you when I can. And, of course, those of you on Patreon, thanks for your support, and you also get priority access to questions. So if you have questions as well, you can go over on patreon.com slash comicbookherald. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I think that's going to do it for me for now. Again, if you want to find all these, go down to the show notes and click the link to the Marvel Fresh Start Fast Track. And, again, if you, like, click the links there to the books, you should be able to see absolutely everything I talked about today. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it. Thanks for listening. 
And as always, enjoy the comics.